All right, so yes. Topic five, or day five, double letters and a difference of two squares. We're gonna do double letters first, which is taking regular ABC factoring and just adding more letters to it. So an example of a double letter question would be X squared plus two XY minus 15 Y squared. Okay, so you notice there's an X squared and there's a Y squared and in the middle there's an X and a Y. So ultimately what you're gonna do is split the X's for the A and split the Y's for the C. That's the only difference in the process. So factors of A, our A is the invisible one, our one times one, and negative one times negative one. We don't use double negatives on the A, so we know it's one times one. Okay, your C value is negative 15. Uh, so there's negative one, positive 15, one and negative 15, negative three and five, three and negative five. So lots of possibilities. And this is one that we talked about yesterday, which is that if the A's are ones, factoring gets really simple because it means that the C values get multiplied by one and they don't change. So then you just have to find two C values that add up to the B value, the two, by themselves, which on this list would be five minus three. That gives you your two. So that's gonna be your winning factor pair. Okay, so let's try this out. First and second, so we're gonna multiply one times negative three, that's the firsts, plus, now the seconds, one times five. And one times negative three is negative three, one times five is five, and five minus three is two, which is our B value, that's what we want. So we have the right factor pairs. So you're gonna draw your two pairs of parentheses. And then you're gonna put your A's in the first position. So one and one, split the X's, X and X. Now, since your A's are ones, the C's, it doesn't matter where they go, it'll, they're okay either place. So we're gonna put the negative three and the plus five, and here's the change. Our C value has a Y squared on it, so you're going to split the Y's on the C value. So if we rainbow check this, what you're gonna see is the X's and the Y's pair up into two XY terms. So like the inside two is a negative three XY, the outside two is a plus five XY, and so the each pair gets one of each letter, and your answer is two X, Y. Which is our P value. So we have the right factorization. Okay, so that's double letters. Um, let's do another example. We're gonna do four a cubed b minus 40 a squared b squared plus 100 a b cubed. All right, just looking at this one, you can tell that you should be able to divide some letters out because four, 40, and 100 are even. So twos are gonna come out. All of them have a's, all of them have b's. So we're gonna figure out what we can take out. So let's prime factor. Four is two times two, and then I've got three A's, A, 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 and a B. And if I'm space challenged, I'm just gonna stack those up like that. Minus, okay, 40 is four times 10. So two times two gives us the four. Two times five gives us the 10. Then I have an A squared, B squared. So two A's and two B's. Plus, last one, uh, 100 is 10 times 10. So two times five for the first 10, two times five for the second 10. And then this one has a single A and three Bs, B, B, and B. All right, so we're gonna factor or divide out what they have in common. 
All of these have two twos. They don't all have a five, so that won't come out. Um, they all have at least one A, so we can take an A out, and they all have at least one B, so we can take a B out. All right, so what we just divided out was two times two AB, which is four AB. And then the fun part, cancel and see what you've got left. So I'm gonna cancel two twos, an A and a B. That leaves me with A times A, which is A squared. In the middle, cancel out two twos, an A and a B. And I'm left with two times five, which is 10, and an A and a B. And then the last one, cancel out two twos, an A and a B. And I've got five times five, which is 25, and two Bs, so B squared. All right, so we did the first thing, which is to divide out what you can. So now we're gonna factor, and I'm gonna shortcut this just a little bit. Um, so our A value is one, so one times one. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 25, but that also add to give you negative 10. So if you think about five times five is 25, and if I make them negative fives, then negative five, plus negative five will give me my negative 10. Okay, so I have a four AB, and then draw your two pairs of parentheses. Put your A's in the first position, so one and one, split the A's, A and A, and again, this one has an A value of one, so the B values can go either way. So I'm sorry, the C values can go either way. So we're gonna write minus five and minus five, and then my C term had a B squared, so we're gonna split the Bs. Right, quick rainbow check, inside two, outside two. Inside two, negative five times one is negative five, and then it has an A and a B. Outside two, one times negative five is negative five. It has an A and a B. Add them up, you get negative 10 AB, and that's what we wanted. Now, when you have two of the same factor, you have the option of writing it this way with them both separate, or the other way you can write this is a 4AB and then an A minus 5B squared. You can put a two up there to show that there's two of them. Both of those are good answer forms. All right, so that's factoring with double letters. All right, Roman numeral two. Yes, ma'am. What did you do for the equation? So after you were done factoring, you were out the four AB and then a parenthesis and did um, what you had left from factoring. What does a negative five and negative five mean? I know it adds up to 25, but how can you do that? So it multiplies to give you 25, that's your C values, and then it adds up to negative 10. Okay, so that's just how you found the C values. Yep. All right, Roman numeral two, difference of two squares. Okay, so we have an old way of doing this, and then I'm gonna show you a new way of doing this, which is much faster, but it's important to see that we've done these before, just not using this particular pattern. So the old way to do a difference of two squares, so first off, the difference of two squares means that both numbers are a perfect square. X times X is X squared, two times two is four. So those are perfect squares. And then difference just means subtraction. So the way that we did this on last night's homework was you just fill with a zero X term, and then you do regular ABC factoring, and that will work. 
But there is a faster way to do it that you will quickly grow to love because it is so quick and so easy that uses the formula. If you have a squared minus b squared, so a perfect square minus a perfect square, it's always going to factor into a plus b times a minus b. That is the formula. So example one, let's say that we've got x squared minus four. So to see if you can use this pattern, you need to see if you can write this as a perfect square minus a perfect square. So x times x is x squared, so yeah, that's an x squared. And two times two is four, so that's a two squared. If you can write it as a perfect square minus a perfect square, that's your green light that says, yep, you can use the shortcut. So A is what's on the inside of the parentheses, it's the X. B is on the inside of the parentheses, it's the two. And following the pattern, it's going to be A plus B, X plus two, A minus B, X minus two. And you're done, very, very fast, fast and easy. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say you've got x squared minus nine. So you're gonna see, can you write this as something squared minus something squared? Okay, so x times x is x squared, so that one's easy. Three times three is nine, so that's a three squared. So my a is x, my b is three, and using the pattern, it's gonna factor into a plus b, x plus three, a minus b, x minus three. And that is factored. Okay, let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's say you've got a four y squared minus nine. So again, can you write it as something squared minus something squared? Well, four is two times two, so I can write that as a two squared. And of course, y squared is y times y, so I can write that as a two y squared. Nine is three squared, so there's that. So my a is two y, my b is three. Here we go, let's write the pattern. a plus b, 2y plus 3, a minus b, 2y minus 3. All right, here's one that's off of tonight's homework. 1 minus 16x to the fourth. So first thing you want to see is can you write it as something squared minus something squared? Well, one is easy because one times one times one times one is one. So one is a perfect square, it's a perfect cube, it's a perfect many things. That one's easy. Okay, let's do the 16x to the fourth. Four times four is 16, so four squared. And then if you have four x's, that's x squared squared because you have two x's, and then when you square it, you get four. So your a is one, your b is four x squared. So you're gonna write it one plus four x squared, one minus four x squared. And this is why this one's a little bit tricky. The one plus four x squared is done. We can't do anything with a binomial and a plus in the middle. There isn't one for that that we've learned. But the second one we can. So this is where you expand your factoring. And can we write it as something squared minus something squared? Well, again, one times one is one, that's easy. Two times two is four. And of course, x times x is x squared. So yeah, I can write this with my a is one, my b is two x. So when you write this one factored, you just bring down the one plus four x squared. That one doesn't change. 
And then the second one, you expand it into the pattern. A plus B, one plus two X, A minus B, one minus two X. And that's what we sometimes refer to as expansion factoring because you, you factor it once, but then you can go another time. All right, last one, and then we're going to call it quits today. So 2x cubed minus 128x. Even if it's something small like this, you want to see what you can divide out. So we prime factor. This is 2xxx minus 128 is 2 times 64. Now, the first one only has a single 2, so I'm not going to finish the 64 because I can only take a 2 out. But it does have a single x. So we divide out what we can. I can take a 2 out. I can take an x out. So the 2x goes to the front of the parentheses. Now the fun part, we cancel a two, cancel an x, that leaves us with x squared, minus, cancel a two, cancel an x, you get a 64. Okay, so look at what we've got. We have a perfect square and eight times eight is 64. We have another perfect square. So this one's going to expand into something squared minus something squared. So x squared is x times x, 64 is 8 times 8. So when we factor this, the 2x will stay out front, and then now we're going to use our a squared minus b squared pattern. We're going to do x plus 8, x minus 8. And that is completely factored. So. The pattern can only have a negative in the middle, nowhere else. If there's a plus in the middle, it's not going to expand. It's stuck. But if there's a minus and the two numbers are perfect squares, then that's something you want to definitely check out.